Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis. Uh, we have something pretty cool here today. I set up a little DIY racer quad and I chose the best components that I could find for it for the cheapest price. Uh, and it, it is around the $200 range, but you have really high end components on here. I, I think Diego has flown some of these components that are on this frame. Mm -hmm in a lot of his frames this year. And I, I think these 2205 red bottoms are probably some of the local like racer favorites. Oh uh, yeah, I'd have to say those are probably top choice as uh, far as motors go. Top choice as far as motors go and, and for the price, they're really, really powerful. We've been using these, both of us have been using these all year long. Yeah. So uh, Diego is a guest on the channel today and we're gonna have him fly this out of the field. And then after he flies it, we're gonna get his opinion on it, uh, see what he thinks about it, because he does a lot of local Northwest FPV multi-GP races, um, just about every single one that comes along. Um, so we have a Runcam Swift on here, just gonna go through these components, and we're gonna have these listed down below if you wanna grab these components and do this build like we set it up. We have this Chimp 210 frame, DYS 30 amp, BL Heli S ESCs that are programmable in BL Heli Suite, those awesome 2205 Emax red bottom motors, Racecraft gold fleck props on here to match the gold hardware on the chimp. We've got an FR Sky X4R receiver in there, and we have a 200 milliwatt video transmitter, cloverleaf antenna, and we're gonna run a 4S 1300 on the bottom of here. So this is a pretty nice frame. It sort of looks like a skull and crossbones from the bottom and it has a four mil bottom plate. It's a unibody bottom plate with aluminum standoffs. And the stack is actually really short inside here. We have this uh, Maytech PDB that I chose on here. And that's just about it. So now we can hook this up to uh, my transmitter and we'll go out and we'll do some test flying. You ready oh, to go? Yeah, let's do this. Let's do it. All right, we'll see you guys at the field. All right guys, welcome to the field. We're doing a little bit of pit tuning right now and after some trial and error, we're gonna get to some good pits for this little build. If you guys are interested to do this, we'll share those pits with you. Here we go. So as most experienced pilots know, that pit tuning is usually never quite finished. Uh, there's always something to tweak. We're getting really close. Okay, here we go. So after much tuning, we are to the point now where we have way less vibrations than we did before. We first built it yesterday, there was a ton of vibration on our first flight test, but quite a few batteries this morning. Seems like it's flying better. Still a little bit weird on the low end. What's that? Could be the camera how it's mounted on here, but a little bit of oscillation. It could be the the props, but it's it's feeling really good. How's the video look? Video looks awesome. But this is a pretty decent price on this kit, you guys. If you're looking for something super high performance. I mean, he's showing what this thing is capable of. It could always be better, for sure. But not bad for our first day out tuning. And not bad at all. <laughs> not a bad first tune. Diego's first tune today. Looks like the rates are nice. Yeah, the rates could go up a little bit, uh, but I'm never really too uh, into the high rates. Yeah, if you're racing. I like, I like to have smooth control over my quad, and those high rates just make it really hard. In the Expo, you can work with that a little bit, but. If you're using it for freestyle, it's nice to have high rates, but if you're racing, you don't really need high rates if you're racing. It's just gonna make you flip into the ground. At the, fresh battery I put on here? at the wrong moment. I think it was. Boom. A little bit of float there. Nice. Air mode helping us out. Pretty sick. 
Handles great, flies great, great punch, great power. It feels about the same for what I'm flying, so I mean. 30 or, amp ESCs. Yeah, red I'm bottom motors. 20 amp optos and red bottoms. And that thing feels just as locked in as my build. Not bad, so thanks for hanging out with us, you guys. We'll go over some of these components a little closer in the studio. I'll show you real close and personal on this frame what we have on it, and I'll make sure I list the links below so you guys can pick up some of those parts to build your own. And if you do build this frame and this setup, we'll, we'll share the PIDs with you on the screen uh, before the video ends. So skip to the end, pause it, and then dial these PIDs into your frame and it should fly pretty good. Good basic start anyway for you. Definitely, definitely a great start. So thanks so much, Diego. Yeah, totes. It, All right, we'll see you back in the studio. All right, guys, welcome back to the studio. And let's just talk about the frame first really quickly. Uh, the Chimp 210, it's been a pretty cool looking frame and one that I was looking at for quite some time. I like the gold hardware that's on here. I also mostly like that as a four mil bottom uniplate design on here. Put the, the bolts on these props. I'm gonna go ahead and take those off. Using some Lumineer V2 props on here. And take this other one off. And like I said, these have been a favorite of ours. These motors, these Emacs 2205 red bottoms have been a favorite most of the year. They're making some nicer ones now that are a little step up from these. I'll include those in the link below if you really wanna make this a really top end flying quad. Um, so the top plate up here, we've got two mil on the top plate. Side plates are also two mil as well. So it's really rigid, super sturdy frame um, as we can show you in some of the durability testing that we did with this crashing it into a tree right here. Um, but uh, overall, it's a great flying quad. We, once we finally got it tuned, everything felt really solid on here. Starting amp ESCs are great. Uh, I have seen some of the top pros flying these DYS 30 amp BL Heli S motor uh, ESCs, so they're performing quite well. And we didn't have too much problem with uh, any of the components on this setup and it it did a great job out in the field, as you guys saw uh, with some of Diego's flying. So let's go ahead, uh, let's put it back down on the bench, and we will uh, do a little final overview with Diego. All right, guys, so we're going to talk about our final feelings about this build. Uh, we did choose, like, top spec stuff for the most economical priced uh, setup that we could possibly do from the Gearbest website and uh, Runcam Swifts, they've been kind of a standard this year. You can tune them a little better. If we're flying in the Pacific Northwest like we are, we can do a little better tune on this camera, uh, which we didn't do. That probably would have helped us out. Yeah, it would have helped, but it uh, wasn't detrimental. A little better, but for our tune, uh, that was the biggest concern with us was getting the PIDs right for you guys. So if you're wanting to build this one, you can use the PIDs and we'll go ahead and show those there on the screen what our final PID tune was. Uh, and, and that should be good for these motors and this ESC combo. We came back with a little dirt in the motors because I stuffed it into a tree. Uh, so as you can see right there. And the uh, frame actually held up really, really well. I was pretty impressed with that four mil bottom plate with the beveled edge tomahawking into the tree. Uh, it survived and I don't, I don't even see a, cr a crack anywhere on this frame. So it's super durable for freestyle as well which we were kind of doing out in the field, mm -hmm. just playing around. That's mostly what we were working on, was just freestyling it. Um, mm -hmm. It's how I got the feel to tune it, because, I mean, you can run a line, and it'll feel fine, but if you try and do anything uh, acrobatic, you'll definitely notice it if it's not a very good tune. I'm not saying it's a yeah. perfect tune, but it'll definitely be a good starting point for any of you guys out there that are uh, looking to build this. For, uh, especially for, for racing too. We didn't turn the rates up too high. Uh, so we have a little bit of a lower rate on here so that if you are racing gates, it's mm -hmm. not super twitchy. Yeah. Um, because if you're doing freestyle, you can have super high rates, but then again, you don't have somebody flying on your tail either, you know, around the track. So I'm gonna have to say that this is a, this is a fun build for around, around the $200 price point. Uh, under $300 out the door is not bad for, for a super high-end quad. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do like this kind of low profile stack on this frame. And it's pretty centered up. I believe that's a true X. Pretty close. 
It's pretty. That's what's pretty popular right now as far as what a lot of guys are using on the course and multi-GP. And the LEDs are tunable on the back by the push button. That's kind of nice too. So you can change all your different colors. You don't have to go into uh, clean flight or beta flight, but. Yeah, the push button though is real convenient for changing the colors on your rear. And I think if you cycle through it, you get a, uh, like a pulsating or a solid light. So you can kind of customize it. I'm sure on, on your uh, clean flight or beta flight or race flight or whichever you're using, you could probably adjust those uh, to your custom liking. And I, I like having the battery on the bottom too, guys. So if you're doing uh, a build for an X-Quad, most of the X-Quads nowadays have batteries on the bottom. Mm -hmm. It does a little bit of better CG. A lot of underslung. Yeah, it does a, a lot better CG. And I, I like running the 1300s myself. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a little lighter, a little less flight time, but yeah. it's a little, it floats a little better if you're doing freestyle. Yeah. Uh, but for racing, really, Probably doesn't matter, 1500 or, or 1300. Mm -hmm. But that's about it, you guys. And uh, we want to say thanks again to Diego Heber for flying with us today, testing this one out, giving you his own opinion outside my own, uh, which you normally hear on the channel. So I appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, totally. Appreciate it. And this is for you, Diego. Woo! No charge. Right on. So thanks again for watching, you guys, and hanging out on the Drone Camps channel. I'm Justin Davis. This is Diego Huber. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Later. It's on the airplane. Waiting for Diego to get off his phone. I'm off my phone, dude. Chill. Hey guys, thanks again for watching that episode. Please do click subscribe so you can see all the newest drones coming out each week on the Drone Camps channel. We're going to show you tons of new stuff coming out in the drone industry. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps. Thanks again. I'll see you on the next one.